and welcome to another edition of Beer for Breakfast ABV. I am Danielle from The Moog Show on 91X. As always, I have my beer drinking partner in crime with me, Paul Segura, research Aloha. and development brewmaster from Carl Strauss. And today we have Latitude 33 with us. We've got Taylor, we've got Adam, and we've got Kevin. We've got somebody on the brew side and two guys on the sales side. So I think that you guys should be able to handle whatever questions <laughs> Paul and I had to throw at you. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. I hope you're ready. Yeah, if not, you're fired. We needed three, so. Well, you know, that's... I better hear from all three of you. It's almost like the Three Stooges. All right, so before we came on camera, we tried one of your hazy IPAs, the Meridian Mist. It's a hazy pale ale, actually, right? Correct. So yes. it was nice and- That got the ball rolling for did. us. Yeah, that's good beer, solid. I like the hops in there. Um, you don't see a lot of hazy pale ales. You see a lot of hazy IPAs. And why is that? Can you, is there any reason why you guys went pale instead of IPA? Yeah, we were looking for something that was a little bit more crushable. It's a summer specialty release. Um, I believe we released it in May for the first time, and it ran through most of the summer. Our final batch is being packaged this week. So it's just kind of like a nice, crushable, summer, hazy beer. Um, Adam, the hops that are in it are? Yeah, uh, so this beer, uh, like most hazy beers, features not only uh, a lot of hops, but also it uses a flaked oats, it uses a lot of wheat, uh, but the main thing, of course, is the hops. And what we chose to use in this one was uh, Azaka, which is a pretty uh, new hop to the uh, scene, but also a uh, Holler Tau Blanc, as well as, uh, what is it, Mandarina Bavaria. So those are the three main hops that we use. We dry hop with it, we use it on the hot side. It's pretty much everywhere in it. And uh, as you can tell from it, it's got a really nice bouquet of hops. Yeah, it's it's three of my favorite drinking. varieties, actually. Yeah, they're, they're great. I think Holler Tail Blanc is kind of what Nelson Sauvin used to be like yeah. five years ago. It's really yeah, pretty white much. Wine. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of people, due to the scarcity of Nelson, would switch over to Holler Tail Blanc because it was a great substitute. So nice. we brewed this for you, Paul. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for your well, hops. All right, cool. Uh, I'm gonna take the rest I of just, it home with me. <laughs> I love when they came on and they fanboy over Paul Segura. Oh, <laughs> the best that one go that far. Right yeah, uh -huh. All right, so this lovely beer right here, it is a Saison, correct? Yes, it is. What can you tell me about it? Uh, so this is our uh, normal uh, like May release beer, and it is a Saison brewed with rhubarb and basil. So uh, you get a lot of the Belgian side of things, but you also get a really, really nice, you know, herb kind of character as well as a nice little sweet character from the rhubarb. Hmm. Yeah. Why it's got a dry rhubarb finish. and basil? Whose mind child is that? <laughs> Who's um, child? Uh, so this was actually uh, the entire team kind of came up with it, and we were thinking about you know what kind of things go together. And what's really interesting about rhubarb is that when you use it in beer, it makes this acid called oxalic acid, and it actually adds a little bit of a tartness to the beer. And so that was kind of the main idea for getting the rhubarb, but also to kind of cut the sweet and kind of play off of some of the more Belgian character, we decided to add a little bit of ba basil into it. And so that's how Syndicate was born. You know, this is one of those beers where theoretically, when you hear about it, it, Sounds it weird. might yeah. sound weird, right? <laughs> yeah. And then you taste it and it's like, wow, it yeah. does work. And it is slightly acidic, slightly tart. Yeah, exactly. And that's kind of what we were going for. Not necessarily a sour, uh, but it's definitely got a nice tart and sharp kind of character to it. A dry finish to it too, which yeah. I like. Yeah. I like the dry finish. It, it's nice yeah. and balanced and, yeah. and dry. So. We also uh, dry hop this with a Huel melon. Nice. So okay. just, a, just a touch of a which dry hop. Which is like a honeydew melon like flavor, another one of those new German varieties that are out there. Okay, yeah. really I, was, I don't hear that one too much. Yeah, yeah. Huel melon's pretty uh, uncommon for, uh, well, I mean, it's gaining popularity, mm -hmm. definitely. And, uh, you know, so we just decided to kind of Go with it, see what happened. We only do this once a year, so I decided to. I of, like this. This mm -hmm. is cool. Yeah, it's I would have made different. Yeah. like just a hair bit more basil. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. that's it, man. Yeah, I could feel that for sure. Uh, we've gotten pretty good feedback on it. I mean, me personally, I'm not really a Saison or Belgian fan, but I think we really nailed it with this one as far as crushability goes. Yeah. You'll notice with a lot of Latitude beers, we like to focus on something kind of unique and different, but also still very approachable and uh, something that's easy to drink. You know, you're not gonna drink and be like, whoa, I can only have a taster of it and I'm done. Like you want it to be something that you could sit there and have a full pint of. And I, I think we nailed it with this guys. It's, it's a solid beer. Um, you could taste like the base Saison underneath all of that too. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, sure. if, if you were to enter this into a competition as, you know, a basil rhubarb beer, they would ask you what the base style is and then you'd have to judge it by the base style. 
base style is solid. Yep. Yeah. You guys, it's a solid Saison that has those elements. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we use a Pilsner malt, a touch of rye, uh, you know, just keep this, you know, mash it really low. Just yeah. keep it nice and dry. You can and taste the white Are there peppers. actual yeah. rhubarbs in this beer? Uh, we put it on the hot side, so yeah, we actually put a little bit of rhubarb so in there. I know that like when you cook with rhubarb, you know, there's like something that can happen. It, that, 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 yeah, right? that it could be yeah. dangerous. So did you have to take that into consideration when you made the beer? Uh, no. Okay. No. Uh, when, uh, you know, I- We're all I, gonna die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> so that's how you dark, end up at the competition. <laughs> I see. We just brought it I there, see. huh? <laughs> I like it. I think of rhubarb pie, and that's kind of a Southern thing, right? Most people, um, when I've been selling this, they've said, uh, oh, this reminds me of like a, a southern rhubarb pie mm -hmm. but i mean it's not as much rhubarb but obviously yeah it's not super yeah. rhubarb no 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 and normally they add strawberries word. or something to it to kind of round out the sweeten it sweetness a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. yeah yeah totally mm -hmm. Good beer, man. It is cool. a Thank good you. beer. Cheers. Like, yeah. like you said, this is a, a more of a limited release. We only release it for about one month. I think we do about a 60 barrel batch of it. Um, we do some cans and distribution and then uh, a couple kegs. But besides that, it's super limited. Is there a special cute. event around the release of it? You know, it was one of our first uh, can releases under the new branding as far as specialty 16 ounce cans go last year. So that was really kind of like our just big can release. Um, we don't plan anything super special around it. Saisons are typically a, a little bit more difficult of a style to sell into places, but we actually haven't had much problem with this because they try and they're like, wow, this is Did not at all what I expected from a Saison, so. Did he uh, say big cans? <laughs> Whoa, big cans. watch out, watch out. Yeah, if it's Taylor, Depend you know. Depending on what we're talking Did we about. Did we go right, go on right, watch out, go on Beware, We upgraded from small cans to big cans. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, who wouldn't, right? It's more, it's I love big cans. <laughs> you guys are no. making me blush. <laughs> <laughs> How else are you supposed to enjoy it? So tell me a little bit about Latitude 33. How long has Latitude 33 been around? Where is Latitude 33? So I feel like I know mostly about Blood Orange IPA, and that's oh, what I know yes. about. Uh, so, so, no, no, no. Yeah. so tell, so, no, no, that's tell fair, me, that's like, fair, like, fair. like if that's all somebody knows about you, what should we know about Latitude 33? Um, Latitude 33 actually has a pretty awesome story. Me and Adam are, I think, the longest running yeah. employees still there. Aside from the CEO. Aside from the CEO, <laughs> Mike Ingram. So we, uh, we st the brewery started about six years ago. Um, you know, it took a little bit of a turn for the worse about five years ago. Um, wasn't looking too hot as far as sales goes. We didn't really have a sense of direction. And then uh, Mike Ingram, our current CEO and uh, part owner, came in and was like, you know what, let's change it up. Let's Ooh, go. Oh, I think we're friends on Facebook. Oh, you might be. that's nice. No, no, no. no, I think so because that name sounds oh. familiar. And I was Mike like, Ingram. I don't know who this person is, but Latitude oh. 33 seems legit. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> confirm. Confirm, Mike, I like we're him. We're friends, we're friends on Facebook. Yeah, he's, okay. he's, he's good on social media. He'll go it's through creeping. an ad like everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so he took over about five years ago and we just kind of changed the whole brand identity. We went in more of a direction of uh, smaller, it was a kind of a, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a craftier brewery. We were coming out with 30 to 40 different beers every month. We narrowed it down to the ones that were really selling for us. And that was uh, our Honey Hips Vanilla Porter, um, working on an IPA and that's kind of where the blow wrench came about. But anyways, um, yeah, so he took over, we kind of changed everything up. We came out with the Blood Orange, uh, sales took off because of that beer. I think the San Diego market needed something that was crushable like that and, and it worked. Um, about, uh, about, what is it, a year ago, we did yeah. a complete rebrand. Um, so I don't know if, if you guys remember the branding before, but it was a different 33. Yeah. Uh, we brought in a company and just kind of helped us find our identity, whether it be, um, you know, who we are as a brewery, what we want to do, where we want to go, the direction. We came a little up, bit of soul searching. A little soul searching, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? We were kind of floundering there for a second and we came up with like this adventurous craftsman kind of mentality where we wanted, you know, unique but crushable beers. Um, and you know, things have just been successful since then. We've we've worked on a couple new collabs, a couple new recipes. Got new tanks. New some new yeah. tanks oh, in the brewery. So we're located in, tanks. You didn't know we're located <laughs> yeah. in Vista. We've Shiny. got a major expansion of the brewery. I definitely recommend checking it out if you haven't been up there. The tasting room's all redone. Um, we've added some unique pilot batch systems, stuff like that. So I mean, for a while there, you know, we were just trying to meet the demand for just blood orange and honey hips, and yeah. you know. It, we were a somewhat tiny brewery and uh, you know, finally we're at that point now where we've sunk some more money back in, we got the tank space, we got the brewers ready to kind of come up with some new stuff. So things are on the up and up right now for Latitude. That's right awesome. On. Well, Congrats you talk about collaborations. Yep. This is a collaboration. Yeah. You collabed oh, yeah. with um, some beer for breakfast alumni actually, Pizza Port yep. and Burgeon. Yep. And so Culver. what is this? And Culver, and Culver yeah, excuse Culver's me. What is uh, this? Uh, so this is a hazy IPA with 
toasted coconut and vanilla sugar added. So not actually vanilla, but vanilla sugar. So, uh, and uh, that, uh, all of that stuff kind of combines to make this almost milkshake like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, consistency to it and just tons and tons of hops. We threw hops in the mash. We threw plenty of, way too many hops. Well, not way too many, but These are the lots of hops <laughs> <laughs> into uh, into the kettle and dry hop the crap out of it. So, uh. <laughs> well, what was fun about it was, um, you know, we haven't ever really done a, a serious collab beer. And uh, we're all from, obviously we're located in Vista, Carlsbad area, right next to Virgin, right next to Pete Support, right next to Culver. Um, so all of our brewers grew up, they all grew up together. So oh, um, they cool. all kind of got together and we're like, let's do a beer together. And we came up with this brokini idea, <laughs> something kind of fun. Um, if you look at the can, it actually has uh, the Paul graphic on it. It has Paul on it. Yeah. yeah. With, uh, it. With the that bikini. beard's too dark to be mine. That looks like Dave Adams. It does. <laughs> Might be Dave Adams. Oh, you know, it could also be Cecil from over at Stone. Yeah. There's, could be. there's so many options on who this could be. Right. <laughs> it was actually, we were supposed to make it over, uh, it was supposed to be an image of one of our brewers, but the, the designer took it a little heavy and I like it. I think he did a good job with it. Oh, don't worry. That kind of looks like me in like 15 years. years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it will be you at some point. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so the, the, what was kind of unique about it was the can design is kind of a combination of, of all four breweries. Um, you know, we use the Pizza Port graphic designer to design the can. Uh, if you look at it uh, in the palm tree, you see a Burgeon, the Burgeon logo, um, Latitude 33 in the clouds, and then you have the Culver Cat. Um, so it was just kind of fun, uh, fun little uh, collab beer between four local breweries, four dudes that just wanted to get together and brew something fun. Um, and uh, it's been, we've got great feedback. We've got great on, feedback. On yeah, it. so far Correct. we've done very, very well with it. I'm not going to lie. At first when you said toasted coconut and vanilla, I was like, oh, this is going to be like a really sweet beer. Like, mm. I don't know. It's, and it's not overly sweet. It's balanced really, really well. And it's got an interesting mouthfeel to it. Oh, yeah. I'm curious about the vanilla sugar. How yeah. in the world did you like separate, or how did you get that or obtain Well, that? you can That's actually, uh, I just went online and looked for vanilla sugar. You know, we had done a pilot batch of it, and I guess uh, Trevor, our R&D brewer, he uh, was went to Sprouts or something like that and found yeah. vanilla sugar there. So I, wow. And literally, just after a quick Google search, I found like 25 pound buckets of it. So wow, that's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty rad. I've been telling everybody they should R and D, like do a lot more R and D, and this is oh, you yeah. know a re nice result that came out of an. Oh yeah, thing. this is definitely. So the uh, toasted coconut thing. I know if. I know that's not fun. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That had uh, it wasn't, trust me, it was so, chaos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah get that done. Between all the batches, we toasted coconut at both Pizza Port in their ovens and yeah. as well as Thorn Street. Yeah. Oh, that's my home. Oh. Yeah. That's my home. That was Thorn nice Street. of the Thorn guys. To, yeah. And they weren't even right included sometimes. in the collab. Yeah. Well, uh, we actually have a pretty good relations with them. We used to do uh, contract oh, I'm sorry back to hear when. that. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, hey, I know Eric over hey, there. Hey, I've hey. actually, uh, I've brewed his beers before. Uh, back when Latitude wasn't doing so great, we were doing uh, contract brewing for other breweries. So uh, Thorn Street was one of them as they were building out their barrio location. Yep. So, uh, you know, I got to know them and through that relationship, we were in a pinch and Got it ha happened. It's, this collaborative thing in San Diego is pretty it. rad, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, uh, there'll be people, you know, brew for example, Pizza Port and Burgeon, they're not even in our distribution portfolio, yet we have awesome relations with them. Um, Jill from Pizza Port. Jillian! Amazing. We, we hate Jillable. her. Yeah. No, She's Jillian, a, we love you. Know, like you. I say, I mean, technically, if you think about it from the sales perspective, we're, you know, you're enemies because you don't distribute together, but it's not like that at all. I mean, you know, great relationship, you know, always willing to work together. Uh, me and Rosie from Pizza Port, their sales rep has done a great job of putting events together with each other. You know, uh, Matt uh, from Burgeon has been helping out, throwing to getting some events going so it's crazy because like you know y you want to think that you know there's this like battle between these breweries but really everyone is out there to take care of each other and you know rising grow. tide floats all boats right yeah. exactly. there's a huge demand for these collabs too oh the yeah hype around it i mean we sold out of them before it was Dude, even I'm brewed burping so. up hops right now yeah <laughs> well our cold ones are there so you know yeah we, <laughs> we pulled from the warm batch here well, yeah. All right. Right. you get more flavors so. so talking events anything major coming up in the coming weeks uh yeah so one of the fun ones we do every year is the best of san diego festival it's one of my personal favorites mm -hmm. uh showcases some of the the great breweries uh you know uh liquor food what from around san diego so we do that one every year um we'll probably showcase something fun and new there um, we'll be at the Del Mar Fairgrounds for their barbecue beer event. I believe that's the 19th. Mm -hmm. So yep. we'll be there for that one as well. 
Um, and then I believe we plan on having a booth, hopefully, at the CCBA Summit up in Sacramento very this nice. year. So. Sweet. Awesome. Yep. Well, very right. cool. And the website. Where people oh, yeah. Can check Where's stuff your website? Out. Where can we find you? Latitude33brewing. Are you sure? Because we had a conversation uh, yeah, about no. this before. <laughs> I was the one who knew. I'm taking charge. It's sure? Latitude33. Sure? Uh, I'm not fully sure, but we'll know. check it out. If it doesn't work, try something else. Use the Google. <laughs> we, uh, we do have some cool, fun new beers coming out, too. Uh, uh, right now, our double embargo will be packaged, I think, later next week so yeah. it's a double version of one of our single ipas lifted embargo killer beer the pilot batch turned out awesome so i'm hoping that this one will be oh. just as good if not better do not worry right it's and then uh great. and friday we actually have our second chance collab oh very cool second chance west coast IPA. marty virginia marty's yeah. the man marty yeah. is the man marty. Marty, marty is, is awesome yeah marty's the man ah, well so cool well taylor adam kevin thank you so so much paul as always thanks for letting me hang you're the best yeah. Uh, Latitude 33, you can find them at your Better Beer Bars. You can find them canned all over the place. Or you can go up to Vista to their tasting room. Give them a check out. Uh, and thank you for watching. You can hear Paul come in every Friday morning at 920. And he tells the Moke Show <laughs> and you what you should be drinking this weekend. So uh, thank you so much and cheers. Cheers. cheers.